These 21 short videos will help you quickly see and understand the relationships and patterns among various types of irregular verbs in English so that you can use them correctly. Other irregular verbs. This video will help you see relationships among various types of irregular verbs in English. The key to understanding irregular verbs is to look for and notice the patterns. Other irregular verbs. These verbs do not fit completely into one category, so they are dealt with individually. They do, however, follow some of the patterns mentioned above, as will be explained. Let's look at these on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, first, the verb see. Notice the sound shift, see, saw, seen. And the past participle takes on an en ending, like some of the ones that we've seen before. With the verb so, the past tense uses a regular verb ending, ed, sowed. And the past participle takes on the WN ending, like some of the verbs we mentioned before. So it's like this, so, sowed, sown. The vowel sound does not change, but one in the past tense requires an ED ending, and the other, the past participle, requires a WN ending. The next one is interesting because it has two separate meanings and two different forms. Shine, shown, shown, or shine, shined, shined. Now generally, if we're saying something like the sun shone, that means it exhibited brightness, we would use the first form, shown, shown, for the past and the past participle. However, if we're talking about make something shiny, for example, I shined my shoes, then we would use the regular verb ending, shine, shined, shined, with the ed. Shave has a couple of different endings in the past participle. It follows a regular form in the past, shave, shaved, but in the past participle, some people say shaven, some people say shaved. With prove, there are also two different forms in the past participle, proven or proved. But the past is simply a regular verb, ed, prove, prove, proved, proven, or prove, proved, proved. Now, dive is interesting because most people say it as a regular verb. Dive, dived, dived. But a lot of people will use dove in the past tense. I think it's because it's similar to drive and drove. Lie is one verb that can be very confusing for a lot of people because it has two different meanings. The first one is when you tell an untruth, say something that is false. And that is a regular verb, so it would just take on the D or the ED ending. Lie, lied, lied. However, when you're talking about the second one, which is a totally different meaning, it can mean like sleep or recline or rest on your back. Um, lie in the past tense is lay, in the past participle it is lane. Now for both forms of lie, for the ing form they have the same spelling but it's different from other spellings of other verbs. It's l-y-i-n-g. The last one is the verb be. Now the verb be belongs to a category of its own. 
For all other verbs, the base form can be used after modals. For example, I might eat, he can eat, people will eat. After do forms, we do eat, she does eat, the man did eat. Three, in the infinitive form, for example, to eat. And four, in the simple present tense along with subjects in the first and second person as well as third person plural. For example, I eat, you eat, they eat, the kids eat. However, the verb be is only used in these conditions. Number one, after modals. For example, he will be, they might be. Occasionally, it's used after do. For example, do be careful, don't be shy. And third, in the infinitive form, for example, to be. However, in the simple present tense with subjects in the first and second person, as well as third person, plural, the words am and are are used. For example, I am you are, they are, the kids are. In the third person singular, the S form, is, is used. The verb be is used in a few situations, but not all. For example, it's used with modals. Can be, could be, will be. Or in the infinitive form, to be. And once in a while with do, do be careful, don't be shy. But with most subjects, you use the verb are, they are, we are, you are. And of course, with I as a subject, you would use am, I am. The S form is used with third person singular subjects. He is, she is, it is. Now the past has two forms. This is the only verb that has two different forms for the past tense. And it can be a little bit confusing because was is used in the third person singular. He was, she was, it was. It is also used with the subject I, I was. Were is used with everything else. You were, they were, we were. The past participle of be is been. And the ing form is being, 